Hello, hello, Keladi. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank very you for good, having me. Good. It's uh, very great to have you. I'm Sebastian Marquet, Crush to Seller, Director of Commercial of Crush to Seller. I'm very uh, excited and happy to have Keladi with, with, with me today. And uh, Kayla worked with Lafor uh, for the Nobile product. And I would like first to introduce you to, to, to the listener. Yeah, hey everyone. My name is Kayla D. Porter. I work for Nobile, which is an oak alternative brand under the branch of Lafort. And I am our business development manager for all of Northern America. And I'm here to help share all the information about our alternatives as well as how you can use them in practice. And I come from a background in winemaking for several years and I've used alternative for the majority of my career. So I find that to be help, very helpful as a background in to help uh, all different winemakers in Northern America to use barrel alternatives because it can be scary. Well, thank you very much for participating to introduce yourself and please, uh, I know you worked on the presentation. So uh, can you uh, show us what you do, what Nobile products are and, uh, and, and everything? Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, this is, uh, this slide is just kind of an overview of what uh, Sebastian and I are going to be talking about today. We'll be talking about the oak sourcing that we do for Nobile, the processes in terms of aging the oak, how we actually apply heat to the oak to get specific toastings, our quality control in there, and then, you know, how to properly use oak alternatives, timing and dosage is very important. And I do have a new product, which is very exciting that we developed in France. So I threw it in this presentation for you guys to kind of get an idea of how we create our products over time. Um, I'll start with our oak sourcing and species. Um, on the right hand side is a picture of France and I don't know if you can see my cursor but we pretty much source kind of I would say the center of France. We source around 15 different uh, forests which helps keep our product consistent year to year and within those forests we typically only deal with the two species that you see on the left-hand side, which is pedunculo and sessile species. Um, they do grow together in a forest, but they are quite different in how they perform. And you can see there's a comparison between the two, whereas one uh, requires more water and richer soils, and the other one requires less water. And one is more successful uh, during the growing summer season and drought tolerant. It grows faster, the sessile does, compared to the pedunculo. And the pedunculo is actually not as a, not good as a competitor as sessile would. Yes, they do grow together, but sessile can become more dominant. And I love this slide because it really proves the point of how many different species a forest has in France, the different regions. And, you know, we're averaging about 2.6 different species per region. So uh, I think it plays to the point that we deal with these two specific ones. So you are buying wood in auction? We're doing a, yes, uh, in auction. Uh, I'm actually not the one who sources the oak. So if you do have more questions about it, please email me. And I've been working with our developer in France to get as much information as I can on how we do that process. I'm definitely more versed in once we purchase that oak, but yes, France typically, the majority of how you're gonna buy oak is an auction. But once we buy the oak, we bring it to our facility in Bordeaux. And this is a picture of our extra fort facility. And so we have control of aging all the way to production and packaging. So it's become really the lifeline of the growth of Noble Eye. We've become much better at controlling our product due to the acquisition of this facility. 
And we actually source all of our, or we season all of our oak at this facility. So the last picture, there's a lot of cement in our facility and that's essentially our oak yard. And we'll season our product for our uh, chips and our staves on site for at least 24 months. And that gives us great control of the raw product before we actually take it to production. Uh, we do have uh, some quality control that, you know, everyone does before they A, select their oak, and then after they toast their oak, they're going to look for certain compounds as well. And so this is kind of the dosage rates of oak compounds that we look at based on the forest of origin. Uh, the American oak is on here because we do have one particular oak that is sourced from America, but on the right hand side, the rest is our French oak and the forests that they come from, and the actual compounds that you're looking at that you'll find in the raw product, which is important to us because those can tr transition in the toasting to create specific aroma characters that we're looking for. Okay. I don't know if you have any questions about these compounds. You Totally can. I know it's, it's a lot of chemistry. But, uh, that's do you do like any uh, testing for any tent or any issue that the wood can have at the source at the beginning of the process? We will do that. It's actually more important at the end of the process for any type of taint in terms of like um, cancer causing agents or uh, TCA. But typically up front, if we are uh, clean about our seasoning, we aren't going to see much taint before it comes in, but we will check it. These are just the oak compounds that we're looking for, but and there's more the, beyond the oak long, compounds. How long do you do the seasoning for? The seasoning? Yes. We do it for at least 24 months. We're on a pretty good production timeline at this point that we're pretty much waiting and ready to whole product after 24 months. So it's not really sitting much longer than that, but it will definitely not sit less than that. That is our requirement, 24 months. Okay. Um, so I can bring you into the processing that we do. We do a few different types of oak alternatives. The first one I will talk to you about is our chips, which I have a kind of a little image of what it looks like. These would be something that you would use at a bench trial, but this is what it looks like if you actually buy the product too, that you can put into your tanks. And how we get to that uh, end product is we start with a wood chipper that you'll see on the left-hand side. We'll put our raw product into this chipper and it'll chip up the oak and come out on the right-hand side and you see it comes onto a shaker table. Okay. And the shaker table is really important to the quality of our oak chips because it has a size requirement to it. So anything that is lower than seven millimeters, which is our required toasting size, it'll fall through and it'll be pushed into a different program. And that's because we want the size of our chips to be consistent. So once we actually go to toasting them, we are not gonna overcook or undercook our oak. Okay. So you have a very good calibration in place to make sure that you have a consistent product. We know that the consistency in oak alternative is a difficult issue, so is the key because effectively if you have smaller pieces of oak and you toast that it will be over toasted compared to a bigger piece of oak so that makes completely sense exactly yeah so that's important you know i mean the fact that we source from multiple forests keeps our raw product consistent from year to year and then the fact that we have these small uh, calibrations in place throughout the facility also keeps our uh, toasting consistent from year to year. We actually have a, a very important uh, piece of toasting our chips and granulars, which you're looking at right now. This is a cooling vat. So we will actually toast the chips 
in an industrial size coffee roaster, control the heat, the time, the time, the temperature, airflow, and everything. And once we get to that specific temperature, we'll drop all the chips out into the cooling vat that you see in front of you, and it'll cool and stop that cooking pretty much instantly. Um, I like to think of it as cooking hard boiled eggs and putting it in cold water right away so it stops the cooking. And this will ensure that we are not overcooking once again. So, so you will get the profile, cooking. you will get the profile exact that you are looking for and that will be repeatable. Yes. Again, uh, otherwise you will be different temperature when it's cooled down, it will still cooking and at this point you will not have a consistency in your product. You Definitely. talk about toasting, what technique of toasting are you using? Because we know we have a fire technique, we have convection, we have vacuum, we have a lot of thermic now system. So what, what technique are you using? For so the coffee roaster does uh, use a flame, but essentially we'll push the hot air into the roaster. So think of it as like super heated heat. heat. It's like thermal. Um, and we pretty much are using, uh, we're not using any fire, especially with the staves and the blocks, which I can tell you more about once we get to the heating elements on those but yes we are not using flame in before as you would see as a normal cooper would do okay so you are using source of heat is the flame is fire but it's just the heat to is transferred to the to the coffee Correct. roster to do the toasting exactly mm -hmm. and it's much safer that way especially with the smaller the smaller sizes you know applying heat to chips is very dangerous. Yes, it is. And then, and, but you also have a smoke. You do not have a smoke coming in. So, you, no. so that is the big difference with fire toast where the smoke is, is around the wood. So the, it's, it's, you know, very, uh, a big difference in terms of, of preparation. Yeah. And we like to keep our facility very, um, you know, we check our air quality all the time. Uh, when I was there actually working in the facility, I got to see them do their, their checks, which is great. It's a good insurance that our employees are still being safe in the yes. facility. Yeah. All right, we can move on. This is just a quick little slide. You can find this on our Noble Way website, but I just thought it would be a good little introduction for you to see what kind of tools we have on our website. And this shows you a nice diagram of the range of chips that we have and what kind of uh, sensory characteristics you're gonna get from each individual chip. So if you did not have a great idea of, you know, what you're looking for or like what worked, how, this is a great uh, reference tool as well as I am. You can, you know, either call me or go to the website and refer to this diagram to find something. So that is the different type of profile with a different toasting level. Exactly. And you're offering with a different name and brand of, of your chips line. Yeah. Yeah, our chip line is actually, it's become quite extensive. We have quite a few now and uh, it's definitely based on a specific paper flavor profile for each one okay. so it's great to have this to kind of show you where you need to go okay um so i put a picture of myself on here because <laughs> up in pacific northwest i'm not up there very often and i do talk to a lot of you on the phone opposed to seeing you in person so this is a good vision of me <laughs> and it's when I worked in the cellar and it transitions into when you should use chips. And this is me starting up uh, an inoculum. So right before fermentation and that's pretty much the best time to add either your chips or your granulars. A granular is something that's smaller than seven millimeters. So that grate that you saw, everything that falls underneath, that's a granular, which is a pumpable chip, which is highly recommended for fermentation. I did put up some dosage rates on here that I've used 
uh, and it's been successful in the past for me. And I recommend it to clients and they're quite happy with it. So it's a, a nice reference. So we'll put this online so you can see the dosage tree. But it'll well, let's work. Talk about, sorry, let's talk about dosage. You know, we know that it's not a perfect and mathematic formula for, for winemakers to use and everyone have to create their own formula for their needs. Uh, um, most of the time, you know, you adjust your formulas year after year. And, and when you arrive to the goal that you are looking for, can you help winemakers to create their formulas, their way of working with the different uh, product than you have? Now we see you as a, an example of preparing an inoculum for fermentation. We know then, you know, the smaller a, a smaller piece or, or granular are usually early in the program in, in the winemaking uh, protocols. Uh, can you, will you be able to help winemakers to set up that formulas? Most definitely. Um, uh, for the granulars, I typically do a pounds per ton and I always like to know A, if you've used oak at fermentation and what type of oak you used because depending on the size, it can really make a difference on how big of a rate that you want to do or how small of a rate that you want to do. So that's usually one of the top questions that I ask uh, in terms of a specific formula. I don't have one for granulars, but for chips, I use any, a gram per liter dosage. And I do have a calculator for that, that I will apply to uh, your needs. And every oak provider is a little different. And I have used a lot of different types of chips in the past. So I do have an idea of, you know, how much you should use. And I always like to err on the side of caution. So I'll start you a little smaller and then, you know, we can work our way through, especially with fermentation, you get results much faster than you would waiting to age and find results. So. And grape varietal as well, you know, being in Oregon now and Pinot Noir is certainly different than Cabernet Sauvignon or Merlot or Cabernet Franc. So, oh, totally. So that is also very important in the, in the preparation. So don't always apply it for me yeah. and, and quantity that you found online or somewhere. I think it's better to adjust that, you know, to the grape varietal as well. Yeah, I mean, I found, you know, you know, having smoke taint, frost taint, or really green wine, and you know that before it comes into the cellar, then you definitely want to adjust to a little bit more of an intense toasty uh, oak, because that'll help mask those characters. So, you know, those are things that I'll ask beforehand, because you don't always want to do untoasted oak if you are confronted with an issue. You might need to use a different profile, and I can definitely help with that. Um, so I'm going to just throw in our, our new product here. I can kind of go through it a little fast just so we um, can kind of get through this chunk. But like I was describing that circle, we have created a sweet range in our chips. And we actually created a new chip this year, which is called Cherry Spice. This is a great photo of just how it is. It really is how it sounds. It's got a great uh, intensity of like ripe cherry fruit with some nice spice nutmeg characters. And it takes us usually about a, a year or two to develop these types of products. And we went into development and we, we like to see what kind of chemicals are being produced, like oak compounds are being produced. Where can we find them in nature? How are they being perceived in the actual product? And then we like to look at kind of the threshold perception of the actual product. So we had three uh, specific oak compounds that we pulled out of this cherry spice. And the first one is Eugenol, which has a nice sweet, spicy aromatic, and it's naturally found in our oak. And it usually increases when we season it and when we add a little bit more toasty notes to that. We know that, so that's how we've developed the, like the time frame or the temperature of the profile. 
And on the left-hand side is our wine descriptors that we've pulled out from this. And then on the right, you can see kind of what are the raw materials this is found in. And I like to highlight clove because I think it's a great aromatic that this actual chip gives and black pepper. Um, but it's always good to do trials and see what happens on your own wine. But and, and at, you're going to see two more slides that look like this. And right at the bottom on the right, there's a threshold perception, which is always good to know before you add something to your, your white or red wine. You know, if you have a lower threshold in a white wine, your dosage rate might want to be lower. Whereas in a red, it's a higher threshold, so you, you want to dose it at a higher rate, which I can help you with that as always. Like I think about these things before I make recommendations. Okay, and okay, then you can also on the chip category. This is a chip. I mean, we'll do, we'll do the same thing with the staves. But since we have the new uh, cherry spice chip right now, I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of what we look at before we actually present it to the market. Okay. So we look at things like this in every single one of our, um, our staves or blocks or, or chips or whatever. Um, the next one that we pulled out in this is uh, guacol which is, uh, it's actually, it's produced with the combustion of lignin, which is increased when you actually toast at a higher level, which we've learned. So again, that builds on the actual recipe, if you will, on how we create a certain product. And again, we've got a clove descriptor. It was one of the top descriptors. So it really started to mesh in uh, the development of this product. And again, you can see the thresholds are kind of flip-flopped and they're much yeah, lower. Yeah. So it's always good to see what you're looking for and we can adjust from there. So that higher yeah, three 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 longer time. Longer time, yeah. So we'll try to balance out the time. Um, if it's too long, then we might see degradation in one thing that we didn't want to see and increase in something else. It's typically just a degradation, which yeah. will increase the ratio of certain uh, oak compounds. Um, so we just go back to the drawing board and just try to uh, narrow in the perfect uh, time and temperature. Oh, great. And then just the last one, which is a pretty common um, oak descriptor is furfural, which also is in this cherry spice. Um, I love fur for all. It's got this nice, beautiful roasted almond, hazelnut, sometimes caramel, um, kind of like a darker, richer, uh, toasty aromatic. And this actually occurs when we degrade the cellulose and the hemicellulose, cellulose. And then, of course, we increase the heating. So the fur for all and the guacol work quite well together because they're in that profile that we've created for this cherry spice, which, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> Great. Right. We're cooks for oak. <laughs> and this is just a quick, we did every year, we, um, we do tastings. We take every uh, rep from all over the world. So US, Australia, Spain and France, those are the four of us, we put together trials and we taste them and make sure that what we're tasting agrees with the last three, three slides that you saw. So I'll just take you through a few spider graphs that we have to kind of show like we're pinpointing what we're looking for. You know, here we're pinpointing our spice and our black fruit perception. Um, in our Australia Shiraz, which was more concentrated, we dosed it at it. A lower rate because of that and we saw an increase in ripe fruit increase in spices so you know th these are only two we tasted through many but you know they all are they're telling you the same thing so i just threw them oh, two for you guys it's a good, it's a good sign yeah. and this is just our product data sheet for that one and like I was saying before, depending on the oak, you might want to use it for certain reasons. If you want to create a sweetness on the attack, this is a good one. Um, 
hints of black pepper and clove is the descriptors that we found. And um, this, it produces more ripe fruit. And the last one that's not highlighted, it reduces perception of green character, which can be important if you have that. So it's always something to look for. And this is a great, um, this is from our website, Sebastian, I think I showed you this. Yes, this yes. is a, another good uh, tool for you to use if you're not quite sure what product you should use, but you know you want volume and roundness or fruitness. This kind of will put you in the range that you should either trial or uh, call for it if needed. So it's quite helpful. So before that, that was kind of a lot of talking. I'm going to go into our last three types of products. And if you have questions for me so far, Sebastian, let me know. No questions? No, I just, listen, your presentation is well done. And, and it's, you know, self-talking. So you have a ship, Catherine. Now we are going to arrive to the staves. Um, with a different color, obviously, you have different colors or different level of toasting, different profile, um, and a different, you know, line of product with a bigger volume, so. Yeah, I hope, uh, I hope it's not too much talking, but we can just get through everything and you learn lots. So. No, it's great. Yeah. Thank you, Yana, it's perfect. Good. Well, then I will transition into um, our bigger profiles. So these are our staves and our blocks and our barrel alternatives. I will go through each one of them for you. But for our staves and our blocks, we have two different types of heating elements that we apply. Uh, like I was talking before, we do not use heat. So the first uh, way that we will heat our staves is actually in a convection oven, which you'll see on the left-hand side. We'll put all the staves in that rack. We'll put it into a pretty much a large size cooking oven, you can think of it. And we can apply water heat, and heat to create steam to op open up the pores of the staves, which is really nice. Helps give you polysaccharides, synologic tannin. And then we can increase the amount of time that it's in these, these ovens, which will give you a different color of toasting. And if you look on the lower picture, the first three that you can see is a fresh stave, a sensation stave, an intense stave. And if you look, you can see that those are toasted all the way through. Yeah. So the convection oven gives you a homogeneous toast, which is nice. You're not gonna get any of that raw toasting in between. So it's, it's really nice if you want to use them in block format as well. So if you are going to cut, if you are going to cut that stave, the inside of a stave will be exactly the same profile than the outside of the stave. Correct, correct. Um, a good, uh, uh, a different example is the two on top. You can see there's a little bit of a darker toast and then it's pretty much like the raw oak in the middle so that's a, a gradient toasting so it's different so that's going to be something that you cut and it's not going to be consistent all the way through so that is very important because it really make a difference in terms of extraction uh, when you have the same toasting outside and inside the timing will not change the flavor and the profile because as the wine go a little bit deeper and the wood the profile will be the same it's just a question of intensity will be different but on the last two one at this point the profile will change as the wine age because it's going to be deeper and you have different profile as you go in the wood so at this point it will be more like a, a barrel toasted by fire exactly actually yes you're 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 correct <laughs> And we get that, that gradient toast that we were talking about with the, the infrared oven that you see on the left. So those are the two cooking mechanisms that we use for our staves and our blocks. And yes, they're going to create different profiles and intensities. Um, you could always, you know, talk to me about them and we, we work with your, your profiles that you're looking for. Yeah, got it. And this is, a, so talking in this point, it's always nice to know how to apply these things. 
So I think it's great to tell you when you should add them and dosage rates and for how long. And again, you guys are gonna have this information for you. So I'll just go through the bullet points kind of quickly. But for our staves, you can use them for white and red. Uh, whites can be started at primary uh, to secondary or to aging. And reds, they usually start in between you know, secondary or aging. And you can use them up to six to 12 months or even more, but at least six months to get that full extraction. And then once your extraction occurs, you're working on integration. Okay. And I, like, I typically like to do a 30% new barrel equivalent. So if you talk to me, I'll talk in NBE, which is new barrel equivalent. Yeah. A lot of people talk in uh, that rate, but I also have a calculator that goes by surface area. Um, so some people like to do it based on surface area, and I can totally address those questions as they come up. Yeah, I believe yeah. for medium and small size winery, people still talk about barrel equivalence because this is usually what they start with. You know, buy a couple of barrel, ten barrel, hundreds, one thousand barrels. So we have you know a percentage of new barrel every year. So that is the reference point for medium sized wineries after that for bigger sized winery will be more like surface contact surface per gallon. Yes. And so at this point you can adjust all these calculations. Yeah. And we have a calculator on our website as well. Um, so you can put it into the calculator and get it uh, grams per hectoliter, new barrel equivalent. It's kind of really how uh, the math works for you. We can do it okay. all in all ways. And so blocks, they'll be used the same in terms of aging, like when you can add them. The only difference here is how long you're gonna use them. So they are staves that are cut up, so you're gonna have way more surface area. Therefore, it's best to age at a shorter period of time. So I recommend three to five months on a block opposed to a stave. And with the blocks, I, prefer to do a gram per liter dosage over a new barrel equivalent just yeah. because of that surface area. And my recommendation is two to five, and it really depends on how extreme of an oak com like uh, composition that you want. So. so you would say if I have a wine with, you know, uh, who's not perfect, you know, like three, four months before bottling, mm -hmm. I'm saying with the blocks, it's possible to you know, found the formula to adjust the one the way I want before the bottling. You, would you suggest to go with the blocks because I have a shorter period of time, so you have more surface and you have a very quick at this point, a response to the wine? Yeah, I would, I would go on the side of either blocks or chips. Okay. I, I wouldn't recommend staves um, just because you're not going to fully extract before you need to pull off and start filtering and bottling. But yes, I would definitely start to recommend um, the blocks, at, uh, maybe a little bit of a dosage, higher dosage rate, or the chips at something a little more conservative. And that both of those should be able to sit in the right period of time with all the cellar work that you need to do. So kind of. So the, the format will be really also be dependable of the application when, how much. Uh, yeah. time the winemaker got on hands to be able to use that product. Yeah. Timing's the first question I always ask. It's yeah. the most important with alternatives. Um, and to be totally honest with the timing is key. You know, telling me that you have six months, but you really only have three, then, you know, that, it that might be change. a little different. That will change. So that will change the you know, the, the concentration, the quantity, the, the amount, and then what people are, the goal, so. Yeah, definitely. So, so usually, okay. longer time you have, bigger format you will go with. Correct. Okay. So yeah. if you have time and you, you know, uh, you have 10 month uh, soaking time before you go to the bottling, you will go with a bigger format. If you have a short, a uh, quick fix, uh, you will go with a smaller format with larger volume. Yes, definitely. Okay. And trials are available. You, you can do trials if you have difficulties. 
Yes, I, I love recommending trials. Uh, we have little staves right here. They come in packets. You can put them in uh, the neck of a 750 ml bottle and let them soak on the bench to give you a good indication of how it's going to perform on your wine. Um, and we also have it in chip form. So trials are really important. And I always like to suggest doing it on your own wine. Although I do trials with tons of different wines and I'm always happy to share them with whoever would like to taste them. But if you can do them on your own wine, then that's also very recommended. One question uh, mm -hmm. then we have often is, can we reuse the oak? You know? So uh, you soak the, the stave for six months in the, in the wine, can you reuse them? Can you uh, take them off the tank and put them on another tank immediately? Or uh, is it possible to do that? Are you going to get the same profile from the oak? Or? So it is possible. I would say that you're not going to get the same profile because like I was describing before, your first six months are pretty much where you're getting all your extraction. So say you were to pull your staves off five months, you really only have about a lifetime of a little over a month to extract on the next wine. Okay. So you are going to get a different profile. Um, also, in terms of alternatives and just using oak uh, from wine to wine, I think it's important to make sure your wine that you initially used it on is healthy. And if you're going to if you're gonna reuse wine, you're going from wine to wine and you're not keeping the alternatives exposed to your cellar air. You know, no matter how clean your cellar is, you never know if something's around and you pick something up and then you, and bring then you all of a sudden inoculate a tank with a bacteria or something unwanted. Yeah. So I, I, I would side on the caution of reusing oak um, people use reuse chips more often than they would staves or blocks mm, because you can just do a quick soak for a month and then go to the next thing for a month and a month, but well, they're still staying in the short time frame. Yeah, well, chips for fermentation most of the time is what they, you know, we use the chips, we do a fermentation with them. Two weeks later, we take them and put them on another tank or bring them to another, you know, uh, uh, need and that you know it's it's one maker sometimes it's a ways to see a bag of chips only used for two weeks fermentation and have that threw them away so it's it's kind of a why yeah. not reuse them if if it's healthy tank and no problem in the yeah. tank otherwise if it's, it's healthy um and you feel comfortable with it then go ahead with the knowledge of knowing that the first tank is not going to be the same as this the next okay but yeah, so the, the final product that I have to show you, which I think is gonna be more adaptable in the Pacific Northwest as um, it seems to be more barrels are used up there. And this is a barrel insert. So as you know, this whole pandemic has happened, there has been budget cuts and um, people are having problems creating a having a nice barrel program so this can help with that barrel program you just insert a stave and it's 20 percent new barrel equivalent and you know you're still getting um, that new barrel nuance just in a less expensive form and in a, just a different format so the stave I see the picture you have on the screen uh, seems to have different toasting level or different profile as well. So would you custom the insert with a different profile or, or is it you do customs for that? We can do, sorry, I'm going to move real quick because my computer is dying. I guess the zoom is <laughs> Training pulling through my battery. <laughs> So we can customize these staves. They do have to go through a, spe a special order in France, which could take more time. But um, what people can do in the cellar is, for example, you get one stave that's 100% fresh and one that is intense, and you can break them down and make half and half on a stave or whatnot. 
So there is adaptability with this product and it's always just a phone call and we can figure it out to see what works best. Okay. And this is just like a, it's just like a stave. So you're going to do a t uh, six to 12 months. Okay. Just like a stave. And you say and you one, say one, one answer, answer is the equivalent of 20% 20 20 new barrel. In 60 gallons. In 60 gallons. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty helpful. And we have uh, free kits. If people are willing to try them, we can send them to you. It'll give you a good way to do a live uh, trial instead of doing it on the bench, a live trial is more representative and we can offer that to you. So it's a great way to explore oak alternatives if you're just getting into the business. Okay. Okay, great. What else do you have to share with us? A few little things. I'm pretty much wrapping up, which is great. You know, um, the way we source our oak is important. The way we toast our oak is important. But another great thing that we do is we make sure we do quality control on every single one of our lots that we produce. So this is a quick slide on what we look for on the back end. We're going to make sure we're not sending anything with microorganisms or heavy, metal, heavy metals, TCA. Um, since we are applying heat, um, there are potential of chard and uh, cancer creating products. So we make sure we're not going to send that out to anybody. And then, of course, we're going to check our oak compounds and make sure that the recipe that we developed to create the specific profile is actually what's coming through. And we have a full lab in Bordeaux that can do all this analysis, which is really nice. It's a great benefit to pairing with Lafort because they have a huge laboratory, which is nice. And then that pretty much wraps it up. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, email me, email Sebastian. So what is important is really a uh, trial are highly recommended. Anybody who want to start using uh, oak or barrel alternative uh, is very highly recommended to do trials prior. Um, yes. I believe to be very important to contact you to get dosage rate timing. Uh, that is I, I very safe to do that. Uh, and saving time as well and certainly a lot of money because if you put too much for too long, it can be very uh, negatively impacting the wine. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you are, you have a website, uh, nobilionology.com, uh, Kayla D. Porter, dot Porter at Lafor.com. And you can also contact me at Crush the Seller. We sell a Crush the Seller uh, Nobile uh, line product uh, at the store in Newburg. So you can always give us a ring as well as Sebastian at crushtoseller.com. So thank you very much, Kelly, yeah. for your time, for your presentation. And, yeah, thanks uh, for having me. And uh, if you have anything to add, please send me an email. I will post that on our website as well. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.